Hey everybody. So a lot of guys uh, fishing for catfish are finding uh, good use for planer boards. Um, where I fish, I don't really have a big need for them, but there are maybe two or three, four times a year where I would like to have them. It seems like it's something I'd like to try. So I have been curious about experimenting with them. Um, problem is they're really expensive, right? It, and for as little as I know, even if I can use them, how much I would have a need for them, I couldn't really justify dropping that kind of money on, on a set of uh, new planer boards. So I'm a bit of a redneck engineer. I figured I could whip something up. So um, I put some together and did a little testing with them, and they work pretty good. Um, I think there's still some, some fine-tuning here, but... Uh, the, I bought the equipment to make a batch of four. Um, I tested with the first one, and I was happy enough with it that uh, I went ahead and made the other three the same way. So I thought I, when I was making the rest of them, I would go ahead and film one while I put it together, sort of walk you through it. Um, you could make any fine-tuning adjustments uh, as you see fit, um, but at least I could show you how I put mine together and uh, sort of get you uh, off and running if you wanted to build a set for yourself. Um, these things, I don't think I have more than $5 a piece on these things. Um, they were really, really very cheap and very easy to make. Um, honestly, they were so easy that I expected them to be a total failure, but they work pretty good. So, so there you have it. So um, I'll walk you through here uh, how I put them together first and then uh, give you my thoughts on it afterwards. Okay, so the first thing you want to make sure that you have uh, the edges ground off so they're so they're smooth. You don't want any rough edges, obviously, because if you get your line cut on it, your line uh, up against it, it can cut it. So uh, at least at least three of them. The the top edge doesn't matter so much because it'll be where the um, it'll have the the pool noodle on it. But definitely make sure you you grind off the edges so they're nice and nice and soft. So from there. We're going to take our pool noodle and cut the pool noodle so it's the right length. Put that over there. There's our pool noodle. Put a slit on just the one side. My blade needs replaced, it looks like. And that's going to sit on there right like that. So we're going to put two holes in this, in the aluminum here. And we're going to mark where those are. We want it just below, just below the noodle. And then one down here in the corner so that your uh, clip or ring will go through the hole and still clear the edge. So pretty close to the bottom. So those look good. Now we're going to take our long machine screw. We're going to put 
put that through. Now the way you put this through is gonna determine which way it planes out, right? So this is the front. And if we put it through like this, it's gonna plane out to the right. If we put it through like this, then it's gonna plane to the left. So you have to decide which way you want it to plane, which way you're gonna make it when you put the screw in. Nice and tight. Now we're going to take some of our heat shrink. We want to leave a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little tiny bit more so we have room to put our clip on. So I'm going to call it there. Take the heat gun. See all the ridges, so that's nice and tight. And then the way you make these clips, there's probably a bunch of different ways to do it. This is just how I did it because I had stuff laying around that would work. So I used some of these, these ring terminals. All right, I just took that plastic housing off. These were these alligator clips. You can see there's, there's a screw and then there's a little set of holes there. I ended up just cutting it. Gonna have sharp edges. Give those a little file.
Then I just took a snap. Like the easiest thing for me to do. Ran that through there. So I got the clip, ring, and that just goes right on. And then we use a lock nut. I don't have any pliers, I'll just use these. It'll be all right. So there's a little play in there. See? This just slides on like that. And there's your line clip. All right, your line will sit in there and be nice and safe. No sharp edges. Now, take our pool noodle, put some silicone, some Gorilla Glue, whatever you got, whatever you like. on this side. Right, and then again down here, you could use probably just about anything. I found these. 
Um, I like them because they were color coordinated and more importantly, they were plastic, right? So there's no sharp edges. So and there you have it. That's the whole thing, right? So I think maybe actually I put this in backwards. Works a better like that. So you hook your line right here in between those on that clip, and then your other line, your the other end of it, through this end here, and that just runs through. And you got yourself a planer. Okay, so like I said, um, my idea was to buy the, the, the stuff I needed to make a, a batch of four. Um, there's a group of four of us going um, to, a, to a, a lake out of state here in a while, and we thought we might be able to use them, so I wanted to make four. Um, that really uh, dictated the size of the, the aluminum sheet I got. Uh, the sheet was uh, 12 inches by 18 inches, and cut it into quadrants. Um, six by nine. So that's what size they are. They're, they're six by nine. Um, if I were to make some more, which I may or may not, um, I think they could be a little longer. I think maybe, maybe 11, 10 or 11 might, might really be kind of the sweet spot. Um, it also seems like a lot of the ones you buy have some, some weight down on the bottom. Um, in my testing, I didn't find that I needed that. So, um, but I imagine you could get, uh, higher weight or something um, to just add some weight if, if you needed it to be more stable um, in the water. Uh, all in all, for as much as I paid for these things, pretty happy with them. I mean, I got to be honest, after my testing, they're, they're kind of a hassle to deploy in the kayak, and I don't think that I'd probably use them unless I felt like I really needed to, um, but we have a situation where we're going to want to do some drifting and we're going to try and want to get uh, drift in shallow water and I thought these would be nice to, to help get the bait up closer to the shallow water without drifting right over the top of the fish. So uh, pretty easy to do, pretty easy, pretty cheap. Uh, I just thought I'd go ahead and share it with you. Um, if you have the, any ideas or if you try and make some on your own and you make any adjustments, definitely uh, put any improvements you figure out or come up with in the comments to, to help other people out who might be trying to do this, okay? Thanks for watching.